lots of negative reviews around that Pixel 6 when it's just come out now, but no one's really done much with astrophotography. It's an astrophotography powerhouse. Why on earth did Google not sell that thing really hard? I suspect it's because we're pretty much at the end of the season. Like, who in their right mind launches a camera on a phone that is known for astrophotography at the end of the astrophotography season? Since I've started this channel, it's been all about low light photography with mobile phones and generally we're going to be trying astrophotography which for most people is going to mean shooting that galactic core like this. What I don't quite understand is that this thing is the Pixel, the G Cam on the Pixel is just a sensational camera for doing this sort of stuff. What it does, it can take a four minute long photo but it's not really four minute long photo. You see what it is is 16 second long photos in four minutes and six seconds that's 15 and a little bit long uh, photos and the way that the pixel does it is it takes all those photos and lines them up as the star so it's smart enough computational photography and this thing is just gun it lines all the stars up stacks them on top of each other gets rid of all digital noise and makes for a bloody good photo it's just amazing the downside is that it takes four freaking minutes to take this photo but you'll end up with a cracker photo let's try it this isn't your point and shoot sort of photography. You're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need a phone holder, you're going to need a tripod. Other than the physical things that you need, you need a bit of nous. You need to know where you can shoot this thing. That galactic core, I use a thing called photo pills. I've done lots of tutorials. I'll link one at the top there. The next thing really is light pollution. And all the other phones that I've reviewed on this channel, iPhones, Galaxies, or Huawei, all these other different phones, they all struggle with light pollution. This thing is probably the best, or the Pixel 4a that I've been using on this channel in the past, is probably the best phone I've seen so far for removing, or well, removing, well certainly dealing with light pollution the best. So basically we're going to put this into here, open up the camera app, and once we open the camera app, actually, I'm going to move. The trees are just here, but if I go that way about 100 metres, there's no trees and we'll be able to get it a little bit more in the sky. Hold on a second. All right, this is going to be better here. I know that just up through here I've got a, a gap in the trees and we're going to get that orange gaseous cloud. You don't have to get this, but this is a very good test for this new phone. So what we're going to do, we'll set up the phone, take a photo, and we'll see how it looks. To actually do this photo, it's really not hard. Just open up the camera app and go to night mode or night sight, and it's going to say, hey, try astrophotography. It's going to give you this option if one, it's on a tripod, and two, if it's dark enough. And in this case, we've got both. So all I'm going to do is turn off these lights to get rid of that, uh, the trees that you can see there. And we'll take a photo, dead set, black skies, and we'll see how it goes. That's all you need to do. The only downside about this is it takes so bloody long, four minutes, four minutes. It's a bloody long time while you're waiting for it. 30 seconds is a long time as a photographer to wait for a photo to be taken. So four minutes, you're kind of going to be crawling the walls while you're waiting for this. We will do some more things with this phone. For example, tonight I'm only shooting JPEG. I'm not shooting RAW. We're not going to do anything techy tonight. I just want to see what the abilities of this phone is. I think it should be pretty bloody impressive. But uh, if you're into this sort of thing, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I'll be doing RAW photos of this with astrophotography. We'll do some light painting and stuff. We'll compare it to the iPhone 13 Pro Max and we'll compare it to the S21 Ultra. Both of those, in my opinion, are certainly up there as far as uh, what I do on this channel here. The astrophotography with foreground elements, they both have their strong points. So I'm very keen to see what this can do. We'll wait a few more minutes and I'll come back when we're done. I think that's a bloody sensational photo. Like most phones that are coming out these days, the night mode capabilities on them are really next level when it comes to astrophotography. It's really just surprising how much, how much better they come in every single bloody year. If you want to get this photo, you can go over to phonephotoschool.com.au and download it and have a look at this up close and personal just for yourself. But from my point of view, I think that is on point. The stars are exactly what I expected out of the Pixel. Is it monumentally better than a 4A? No, I don't think so. You're going to be able to print it bigger than a 4A though, because this is a 50 megapixel phone or camera. It pixel bins uh, to roughly uh, 12 and a half megapixels. So it's reasonably big. You can print that uh, a fairly good size. Once you've got that photo from over at Phone Photo School, um, well, that, that'll help you decide if you want to buy this phone or not. I know a lot of you guys have based some of your purchasing decisions on what I tell you guys here and what it can do. So head over there, have a look for yourself what this thing can do. 
haven't even shot raw yet, it's pretty bloody impressive. Well, that answered all of that. I knew the stars were going to be good. You probably knew the stars were going to be good as well. What I am keen to learn is in the next video when I compare it to the iPhone 13 Pro Max and in night mode versus astrophotography mode with the Pixel, I'll be kind of keen to see how good the foreground elements are when we compare the two phones as well because the iPhone at the moment, as far as I know, it's the best on the market right now for foreground photos, like subjects like trucks and trees and that sort of thing when we're shooting the stars. Anyway, I'll catch you guys next week.